Hey, 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 what's up, guys? It's Ken here. I'm Ken Swanny. Matters as usual. I'm not going to be so short because it's so late already. So I can do a video with my usual vibrant energy because it's like 2 a.m. in the morning, guys. And I've decided to know what I have to shoot this video because I have been out doing other stuff. I went hiking. I went to the border between um, Russia and Finland. And it was an amazing hike. I had a number of friends. We experienced really nice stuff, nice nature trails. Lots of fun, you know. I was out the whole day. Now I'm back at the house and I'm thinking, okay, I haven't done my video, but I have to do it because I'm disciplined. And, and because I believe that I have to channel these messages out there when I feel like I should. And of course, there's consistency. I need to be consistent with whatever I'm doing and to ensure that we can achieve the results we want to achieve as I people as a group and as an individual of course imagine it's 2 a.m and let me show you how it looks outside right now Yes, that's 2 a.m. Do you believe that? That's 2 a.m. in the morning, guys. It's crazy. Otherwise, guys, welcome to Case Money Matters. And right now, we're going to talk about Omosh. We're going to talk about Omosh. There was a story that came out about Omosh being broke after being helped. So just to give you a bit of a background story, Omosh used to act in Daily High. And after that, he says that he went broke because the show was shut down. And he had no finances, so he came out, he pleaded. With people and he got a lot of help from people one of the main people who helped him was jalango and i believe this is something you all know so i won't go into details of what happened but recently he came out again after he was held and insisted that he's broke again and he needs money okay so i believe this is the life that most kenyans are living and we don't have to lie about it we have to be honest about it for us to confront the problem that we are facing as a people with regards to financial literacy issues because what Omosh is facing right now is not about money. It's about financial literacy. It's about lack of proper financial foundation. Most of us do believe that we have proper financial foundation. But I tell most people that we have been brought up with financial trauma, with money trauma, whereby we have a particular behavior, attitude, and perspective around money. And if we do not correct that behavior, perspective, and attitude around money, we have to accept the fact that we always suffer. So it doesn't matter how much you earn, it doesn't matter how much you make, it doesn't matter how much people help you. The fact is, if you do not correct certain behaviors and attitudes and uh, what we call uh, traumas that we suffered around money, then we are not in a position to actually help people and help ourselves. If we cannot approach financial coaches, if we cannot approach financial advisors, if we, if we cannot find ways of bringing in financial literacy to our schools in our mainstream institutions then we're still going to have a problem so i said that what happened to mosh is actually the reflection of what most kenyans are going through that is the truth that's the sad truth it's not just a mosh most people live without financial planning most people get a lot of money without any solid plans of what to do with it most people have the employee mindset whereby even if you give them money today they can't do anything for themselves so we have to stop feeding people and start teaching people how to manage money, how to start businesses, how to do things for themselves. So that's something that is extremely important. It's not about helping them by giving them cash. It's about finding the real problem and solving that real problem and then helping them to get to stand on their own. Because what we did with the Moish is basically help that situation at that particular time using cash but he never helped the behavior of the person. So his mindset, his behavior, his attitude remained the same. And that's the story of most Kenyans. We have people who earn lots of money in Kenya. We have people who have been making millions and millions of money. But the moment they are stopped from their employment or the moment they lose their income, they go from grace to grass. So what that shows is that people lack financial literacy foundation. That's number one. Number two, as a nation, we have accepted that kind of mindset. We have developed that mindset whereby we need to help people. We are creating a cycle of dependency and a cycle of poverty mindset. So we have these people who always want cash, they want help. And then we come as a nation because of the emotions and we give them cash. 
this technical help. So when we help them in that moment, they're okay until they have to come back again for more help because they realize, okay, I just need to try out and people will help me and that's it. But we have to stop that emotional decision making and go to the root of the problem. So if we look at this thing from a national perspective, you realize that we have created that kind of cycle. First of all, let's begin from our leaders. The kind of leaders we are electing are those leaders who give us small stuff during elections. They give you 50 shillings, 30 shillings, 100 shillings, 200 shillings during elections. And then you vote this person in and this, this person does not have any capacity to go and change the policies in the government that can actually help us. So in that sense, again, we have accepted that we can take that short satisfaction for the long-term suffering. So we don't look at the problems, even politically, from the foundation of it. We look at it from the fact that, okay, right now I need 50 shillings or 100 shillings, and from that 100 shillings, you make a decision of which will lead you for the next 10 years or so. So if you look at it from a national perspective, we have accepted that kind of thing from our leaders. If you look at it from a societal perspective and from a family perspective, we have also been nurtured and taught to be employees. So we are people are always expecting to be employees. We are expecting to be helped. If we cannot be given a job to do and be paid at the end of the month, we are expecting someone to help us with cash. So we have not taught people how to be independent. We have not taught people how to fish. We have taught people how to come and ask for fish. So we cannot blame Omosh. We have to blame ourselves. First of all, we have to blame ourselves for accepting this as a national culture. We have a problem with our mindset. We have In Kenya, we have what we call the poverty mindset. And the poverty mindset affects even those who are getting money. The poverty mindset does not only affect certain people who are poor. It affects even people who are making millions of money. Even entrepreneurs who make millions and millions of money, they're affected by the poverty mindset. They have a mindset whereby they do not think about the future. They have a mindset whereby they do not think that whatever they get now, they need to invest it and make sure that that money multiplies. So this is the mindset of the majority of the people. Even people like us who are in the diaspora, we have created a poverty cycle. Each and every person have participated in creating a poverty cycle in Kenya, whether it is in the family level, societal level, or even the national level. We have participated in creating a poverty cycle. That poverty cycle is created by helping our families with cash and never with ideas. That poverty cycle is created by electing leaders not based on policies or ideas or ideals, but based on some little money that you're given during election. That poverty cycle is created by always expecting help from other people. So we have all participated in creating that poverty cycle and poverty mindset. So we cannot blame the people who come back to us. We cannot blame Omosh. You cannot blame Omosh because that is what the society has created. Yes, it's good to come and help someone at the time of need. But if you forget that this person has a behavior that has put him in that position in the first place, then no way to help anything. You're going to give him 10 million. And after one year or two years, the person will still come back to you. So we as a nation have to ask ourselves financial literacy questions. What is happening with regards to financial literacy? Do people actually know how to handle their finances? Do people how, actually know how to budget, how to plan ahead, how to invest, how to start small businesses and sustain them? Those are the questions we need to ask our people. What skill does someone has that we can support as a people so that they can develop and make money? Even in the family level, we need to ask ourselves, how can I help this brother or this sister to have a skill or develop a skill that can help them sustainably make money and grow themselves. So we shouldn't blame Omosh and we should not forget that this is actually the reflection of 90% of the lives of Kenyans. We have created this. We have accepted this from the national level. We have accepted this in our leaders. We have accepted this in our families. So we cannot pretend like this is an isolated situation. And what is the solution? The solution is financial literacy. And how do you attain financial literacy? We have to inculcate it in normal institutions and use people like us for financial coaches. The reason why I do coaching by focusing on the mindset first is because I know that if you do not change your behavior, you will not change anything about money. Success with money is 80% behavior and only 20% money. So if you are well behaved with regards to money, you are already 80% likely to succeed than if you're not well behaved and you have money. So looking at it from that perspective, I always make sure that I focus on finance coaching as very holistic. And that's why most people come to me. I always assure you 100% of the time that you're going to succeed because I don't focus on the money you're making. I focus first of all on the mindset, money trauma, uh, your attitude towards money, your perspective of money. 
your idea of money, you know, and then I move into your objectives, your goals, your plans, what you want to do. And then I go into the technical part, which is the financial foundation, where are you at the moment? And then we go into investment options, income gen generation options, businesses that you can start. So it is a full operating machine that will definitely help you get somewhere. It's not something that's going to give you a hundred shillings, 5,000 shillings for now. And then we forget about what will happen in the future. So it is something that is fully rolling. I start from the mindset because I believe that's the foundation as we go on to the other things which are more technical. But the foundation is the mindset. If nobody can ever change your situation, if you do not change your mindset. And as Kenyans, we have to accept we have played in this role of ensuring that people have this poverty mindset, people have this poor money mindset, and people believe in helping them with money than helping them with ideas. So from a financial coaching perspective, the life that Omosh has been living and the life that he has lived and what is happening to him right now is a reflection of life that most Kenyans are living. The only difference is that most Kenyans don't have the privilege of having Jalango and other celebrities come to their rescue. So for us to actually help this situation, we need to actually dig deeper, not just look at this as isolated case or rub it off or say whatever. No, this is what is happening in the society. So I said one solution is just going for financial coaching. And that's why I say for our people, financial advice does not work. We have to do financial coaching because financial coaching is guidance. Financial advice is based on your assets. We don't even have those assets, most of us. We need to guide people through the financial journey and tell them what to do, tell them how to change their mindset. Because this mindset has been here for a long time. If you don't correct those ways, you won't make money. Even if you make money, you won't become wealthy. The goal basically is to become wealthy and enjoy financial freedom, not only for yourself, but even for those who come after you. But if you do not change your mindset, even if you make money, you won't be wealthy. And that's how we must sort out the issue in the black community. We must think about financial literacy and we must also embrace financial coaching and financial consultancy services. Talk to people who understand these things and let them focus on the mind. Just the same way you go to the hospital, just the same way you go to personal trainers, just the same way you consult on diet, is the same way you need to consult on financial issues to help you ride the wave. Otherwise, guys, I hope that's really helpful because I wanted people to understand that the issue that we are facing now, most issue, it's not just his alone. It's a national issue. It's something that all of us have accepted at a certain level. I mentioned that we have accepted it from the national level, by the way we elect our leaders, down to the family level in the way that we help our relatives and our brothers and our siblings. So this is something we have participated in in very many ways. And of course, even with celebrities, by helping them and giving them cash each time something happens. These people have money. They enjoy money. They get money. Things fall apart. They come to us. You give them money. And they believe that that's the only cycle. You have created the cycle yourself. So if you didn't ask someone, okay, acting has failed. What else can you do that will give you money and can actually sustain you in the long run? Nobody asked him that. They bought him foodstuffs, they bought him a house, they gave him land, and all those things. It's good, but we must get to the bottom of every issue that we have. If we're going to be helping the way we're doing it right now, it's not going to be helpful to anybody, not to the celebrities, not to our families, not to the society as a whole. We have to get to the bottom of these issues and accept that this is the mindset that we have. Money trauma, financial trauma, these are things that are real. We are suffering from them and we have to correct them. Thank you guys, and I hope this video has been helpful. I hope this is informative to you. If you want to make any financial decision, look for information, look for finance coaching, financial advice if you want to, financial consultation if you want to, look for it. Don't make these decisions on your own. Guys, thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Fast food chains, I'm feeling better, there's no doubt about it.